Skylar, you were so calm and collected and it made it so easy for me to understand you. Not like those other people who, you know, they get so, so angry and tense and defensive. Okay, let's talk about palatability and respectability politics. Comment you heard at the beginning is something I receive often and usually it's presented as a big compliment. And you know what? I don't receive it as a compliment and here's why. What this really means is I respect you, Skylar, but I don't respect other people who get angry when they are disrespected. It means that Skylar is palatable. Skylar is respectable because Skylar conforms to this box that I expect him to. I think most people out there expect the person they talk to to be a decent person, respectful, calm, whatever. It's not really rocket science. That's how human interaction works. <laughs> or should work, but let's hear what he has to say. The reason I can do that is because I have privilege. I have the privilege of going to therapy weekly for the past six plus years so I can support myself emotionally. I have the privilege of having a family that supports me and a partner that supports me. Stable housing, financial privilege. I have a wide network of friends that support me. All of this means I have the capacity to be emotionally grounded in these moments, which is a privilege. You chose to go to therapy because you knew that you really needed it. That's a choice. That's you using your brain. That's not being lucky or being privileged, that's you using common sense. If you're not feeling well, go to therapy. This is what I always tell commenters that thank me for my calmness, my collectedness. You should not expect that from other people. You should not expect that when you disrespect somebody that they're gonna have the privilege to ground themselves in that moment and be nice to you when you've disrespected them. So in other words, you can't expect trans people not to be mentally unstable when you're talking to them. Why I'm being called a transphobe, I will never understand. We're focusing on the wrong problem here. 95% of the time, these non-trans people talking to trans people are not the problem. They're not disrespecting them. They're probably saying something true, or they're just being honest, which should be allowed. I think it's pretty simple. If you want trans acceptance in society, you have to hold trans people accountable for their actions their bad attitude. It's important that we call out bad behavior in any community. What's so insane about what I'm saying right now? If I pursue someone presenting as a woman, then much later on, it's surprise, I actually don't have those parts, love me anyway, who's wrong? Let's talk about it. The shortest answer in this situation is that nobody is really wrong, though you're a little bit creepy because this comment very clearly supposes that you are only looking after a woman for her parts. You are only pursuing her to have sex. You think it's creepy? I think it's inappropriate that you shame straight men for wanting to have sex with a vagina, which is basically the definition of being straight. A straight man is attracted to biological women. The sex in heterosexual refers to biological sex, not intercourse, but biological sex. So when you think about it, you're heterophobic, and that's not a good look. It is not wrong for somebody to not give you their entire medical history about who they are at a very first date. Which is to say, if a trans person doesn't want to disclose their entire trans history to you, they don't have to. If you don't want to date trans people, then you should say that. So a man should always assume that every woman he dates is a trans woman? Oh yeah, that's very convenient. Maybe these trans women don't have to, but it's a good idea to do so. Because first of all, you have no idea if the man is into trans women. You gotta assume that he's not, so you won't get disappointed. And second of all, I don't get why trans women would wait a long time to tell the man that she's trans, because if she gets rejected, it would hurt even more. She will be wasting her time, he will be wasting his time. I don't see the point. It is every individual trans person's right to decide when they want to share their identities with others. And I know a lot of trans people go about it differently, and that's okay. Again, if you don't want to date trans people, you should make that clear. Just like any other preference that you might share with people, some people don't want to date somebody who's far away. I wouldn't call sexual orientation a preference. Here's an example. When I'm saying I prefer to date older men, I'm not denying that I could never date someone my age. I just prefer older men. But to have the word preference when it comes to trans people, it doesn't really fit. When, when straight men are saying, I'm only into biological women, it's non-negotiable, <laughs> okay? So it's not a preference, that's just what he's into. Please respect that, people. 
So I was just picking up my vehicle from an oil change and the person came out of the garage and said, what can I do for you, young lady? And I know that this was intended to be a greeting of respect and kindness or politeness maybe, but I had this immediate like, okay, young, maybe comparatively, I'll take it. But I was like, lady, what do I do with that? Like, it's so complicated because I know this person only intended kindness. There was a smile on their face. Like I know that they weren't trying to like patronize me or gender me, but I felt so gendered and so inappropriately gendered. And I don't know what to do with that. Like, what do you do with that when someone like has the best of intentions and I don't really want to spend all of my spoons trying to educate someone at the Costco car center. What you do is analyze why it made you feel uncomfortable and then work on that. Go see a therapist. Why do I as a woman feel uncomfortable being referred to as such? This is yet an example of how these non-binary people are appropriating transsexuals' real issues. I have been in so many situations where I was debating in my own head, should I say anything, should I not, when being misgendered, when people assumed that I was just a woman. So I feel really bad for her that she feels uncomfortable being a woman when she's obviously just a woman. Just stop appropriating transsexuals' experiences. Stop. You're privileged, my friend. You can choose not to have those struggles that transsexuals have. That's your choice. Transsexuals wish more than anything that we can have a choice not to feel dysphoric, not to have any transsexual struggles. We would wish that more than anything, girl. But we can't. It's simply not a choice for us. Because gender dysphoria is a mental disorder. It's not a choice. You know what I don't get is why people still see me as a woman. What more could I be doing? I literally cut my titties off. I, I don't think I look like a woman. So why does everybody? I don't know if this was a rhetorical question, but I'm going to answer it anyways. Here's a tip. Stop being desperate for other people's validation and you'll be all right. I hope that you did not cut your breasts off. Go on testosterone for other people. So if you're doing this for other people, you would never be satisfied. Instead of fishing for comments like, oh, you look like a man, serve king. How about you try to be yourself? Whatever that means. It's a little bit ironic that the I'm just being my authentic self crowd is so desperate for other people's validation. Make it make sense. Thank you all for watching. As always, leave a comment down below what you think. I have huge news. You can now be a member of this channel. If you're a member, you get to see more videos from me and you get to decide what my content should be. I'll also be doing live streams, answering your questions about literally anything and I would love to see you there. You can click the link in my bio. Remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell, and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace out.